G'day, how you going? Ian Aplis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my channel. I want to teach you beginners what you can paint in acrylic. All right, can you see the size? That's the size of my canvas. And you'll also see these colors going up the screen that I choose to use in this video today. Now, I try and break it down so a five-year-old can understand it. And watch the videos a few times just so you know what's going to happen before you start, okay? So let's go. Now, first thing, I've got some soft body titanium white and I want to mix it with some retarder that'll slow down the drying time of that titanium white, okay? And there's my horizon area, so it's a bit under halfway. So I want to get this paint and just push it all into the two for the canvas everywhere, because this sky is going to blend like oil artists can get their paints to blend, because acrylics can be very dry, chalky and wanting. And if you don't know how to use them, they can be a nightmare. So I'm here to show you how to use them. All right, now I'm gonna stroke that left and right and get all of that nice, thin, even film. I've got some quinacridone red violet. I wanna get this in one corner of the sky. I don't have any of it, that's the rest. That's all I've got, I've got no more left in the tube. I'm choosing to use this color because I wanna get a bit of a warm color in the sky. And over this side, I wanna just crisscross it Bring it over. I don't have any more to darken it up, so that's it, I've got to take it easy. Okay, it's, I'm gonna stroke it left and right, just, I don't wanna bring the white into it, cause see what's happening there. So let's be aware of that, Ian. Cause if I bring that back, I'm gonna keep washing it with the white. So I'll bring it from this side. There we go, look at that, so easy with this putter on a brush. I call it a putter on a brush because it puts the paint on really good. Now down here I've got dioxine purple, that's the end of my tube of that as well, my goodness. And we'll get this crisscrossed in, coming over to that violet colour there, get a bit more on the brush. It's just a different weird sky this one. You can do it a realistic sky if you like. Okay, we've got all that washed on to the white there, so we shouldn't get any white surprises anymore. All right, now I'm gonna to come to the tip of the brush and stroke that like so. I might get a blending brush now and just blend where the two are meeting. Just start from the red side, bringing that gingerly over to the purple side. I'm just stamping it, I'm not grinding it too much, otherwise I could lose. See, if I go too much, it's gonna go down to the white. Now I wanna bring some of this purple back, stamping onto the purple, I'm bringing it back over this, see how it's a bit pale there? So that's what I'm doing, bringing it over the pale area there, just like that. I'm just gonna stamp this, get rid of all the brush strokes, just so it's gonna match the texture of, over that side there. All right, now let's get some clouds in there before our paint dries. Okay, I just wanna grab some titanium white on my hog bristle fan brush and get some clouds into our sky here. So I'll start, where I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have boom, 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 so I'll start about here. I wanna get the type of, the top there with some openings in it, just something there without contaminating all my paint and maybe something coming up here, getting the tops the shape I want. There we go, I'll stop there for now because the clouds are gonna keep going and going for a while. Grab yourself a blending brush, kitchen cloth or something to wipe and I wanna get the corner of this brush and then just control the top of my cloud with the corner of my brush, okay, just like so. There we go. Look what's on there, look at that wipe it and now just add turmoil and twist that paint that i've got on there the colored paint it's still wet from that retarder and craft paint i put on in the very beginning of the video okay turmoil look at that it's going to pick up pick up those purples there now i'm going to wipe it and go again get the corner 
just get the top the way I want very lightly don't over pressurize it and now wipe my brush and start creating the turmoil of a cloud here okay now I'm picking up some more just get the corner of my brush get some kind of cloud flip-flopping over here I want to come in front of that one but down all the way over here now there's me cloud I'm making sure I'm leaving bits of openness there so when I do blend it I can have that vibe of cloud there that'll do that brush needs to be washed it's contaminated now picking up the blending brush again and I want to sort of sit this in front of there in front of there just getting the tops the way I want. Wipe your brush, it's important to wipe your brush. I'm controlling the top of this cloud first. See all those hard brush strokes from when I put the paint on there with my fan brush? I'm just disguising all that. And then coming over here. Now I'm going to blend and twist and add the turmoil to it, okay? Alright, over here I'm just going to get something here now in front of there in this corner and it'll fade around to nothing at the bottom. I want to get a bit of deliberate white in front of that one. Something like that. I want to control the top of that cloud, leaving it and then twist and turn all the bottom down here. This is some kind of surreal, maybe a space looking vibe. Now get the turmoil softly. Bring that down to the horizon there. Now just here I'd like to get something in front coming up and down each type of here, like that, yeah, there we go, something there, that's it, keeping the top of that brightness there and blending it down, so it's sat that cloud behind it back, and then twist and turn all this down into your horizon area as well, that's a fun painting to do when you're just starting out, something like this. I'm wiping on my brush because I want to get a lot of this a lot softer, see, so I was stamping it, patting it. That's pretty much what I was looking for. I just noticed there, I'm going to just distort this, see it looks like a line there? So I'm going to just distort that with some kind of behaviour there and blend that in to the both. I don't know, something like that. How's that? I'll look in my monitor, I saw that in the monitor there. That's okay. I'm just going to grab a couple of pounces because I just want to make a couple of planetary vibes in the sky there. Now one can probably get tucked right in here where there's no clouds. How's that looking? Not bad. Pretty good. Pretty easy. I've just put it on and give it a twist. Why I twisted it, it's grinding the underneath colours into it as well so it's not just a heavy white cloud. Now I'm just going to stamp paint into this smaller one and just get some other kind of planetary thing floating out there somewhere, maybe all the way over here somewhere, just a smaller one. If I can get my pouncer a bit straight. There we go. Because I can't spray any stars on there, I've just grabbed a detail brush and I just want to dollop where I can some cl uh, stars behind all these clouds here so I can control where my stars lay. Okay. And because the stars are the furthest away from you, you do not want them in front of a planet or in front of clouds. So I can just take my time with my star placements, get them, getting them where I want because without the stars, it'll lose that vibe of being out there in space. 
something out here. Okay. Grab yourself a dark color. I've just got dioxine purple, but you can use black if you want, or a black and brown mixed together. I've got myself a flat brush, and I wanna bring uh, the shape. I'm gonna get the top of my mountain in first, and then I'll come down, okay? That's what I wanna do. That's what's going on in my mind. All right, so we'll get this reaching right out there and coming down the, right there like that. Now get your paint a bit inky so the edge of this will be nice and sharp. And I wanna come down there. Now watch what I do here, and you can copy this shape if you feel. because I, I don't want this to dig in. And then we're gonna come up just with other bits and bobs. I'm just making mountains, like something you sort of see with the space vibe. So I'm, I'm caressing these clouds where I'm getting just where I want, where I'm getting just how much of the cloud I want you to see, okay? Up there a bit. Something coming down. There we go. Now what I wanna do is just simply block this in. This top part where it's painted, I've gotta be careful, so I'm gonna stab it on like this. If I press too heavy and grind into it, it's gonna lift it and bring up the white underneath. I have dried it, but you know, you need it to sit for a couple of days for that not to happen. So I'm gonna be very careful the way I'm just stamping this here. I'm gonna get brush strokes pulled the way I want it to be as well. And now it's a matter of once I've done all this, I can work out where the shadows are going to be and the highlights are going to be. Those planes are still flying overhead, Ian. Yeah. Now see here where there was no paint, it's just the raw canvas. I can push hard here. If I pushed this color on this hard over that paint there, it will dig it up. So that's why I want you to understand not to be so heavy on that top half. Down here it's fine. Now this can be dry, ready to do the next section. All right, I've got me permanent linserin and my brilliant violet, which is over here. I wanna get me a linserin I want to just tint it a bit with some white, just so it's a bit more opaque. Now, we're going to do the tops of the mountains with this. Now, I just turned my light amperature up a bit. I want to grab some of this. I've washed that brush that I mixed it with so it wasn't all blobby, and now I'm loading it again. And I want to start the very tip of this. Let me get my mail stick. The tip of this here. Now I don't want to see a dark line on the top side of this, so I want to come just a little bit beyond there. Okay, because this is going to be like slithers of rock coming all the way down, so this will probably, you can stamp it on, scrape it on. I want to bring it to about there. Now it's important that your underneath colour is dry. And then from here, I want to create the underneath of here. So in doing that, I want to go like this. Leaving bits of dark. I'm doing these vibrant colours just to make it something different. Along there, all the way along here now. Now, see, it's important. Some of these might be weaker than other stamp parts, so make sure you get it all reasonable. There we go, coming down here. And this is gonna pretty much, I'll show you with this one. It's important that you see how this is done. Right against the edge so there's no black. Okay, see this line here? We're gonna come beyond it now. Beyond it now. You could probably step up a bit there Load her up. Get that imaginary zigzag line going there. With this, 
scraping it down all the way there like so and then this is all going to come down but take your time getting all these red bits or this color whatever color you choose to use all the same value not some lighter and darker than others and over here it's simply going to wear all the way over here beyond that's a bit in the distance there and hopefully this will make sense to you and it's just slithers of rock just using a flat brush some bits can be fatter than others now we've dried that paint underneath we just don't want it too heavy otherwise you, if you start digging that up you're gonna to have to stop and dry it some more we have pretty much got the color on the right side of these peaks let me get my hand out of the way this is coming all the way to about there and it's going to come juttling down as well same again all the way leaving that peak you're getting an imaginary zigzag line there okay like that and then just get our slithers of rock sheet rock or whatever it is <laughs> all coming on in here see that how it's very pale you know, yeah you want to get them all the you want them to stand out how's that looking yes i'm looking in my monitor i can see where that's going and then this one is going to come all the way down this side of it And we're just going to stop right about there with it. Oh, my camera's right in my way. It makes it so difficult for me to paint at times. So what I want to do is get this. Now I've got another little bit there, so I'll just bring him like that. Get my imaginary <laughs> zigzag line there. And you can see how easy this is. If I can do it, you can do it because it's just time and practice. And we're going to kind of, this is kind of laying flat over here. I just want to look in my monitor. Now, see some of these are a little bit too weak. I'm just thickening them up a bit before I dry it because I want to give this color a dry and then we'll add the shadowy color of it just down on the lower half here okay see how easy that was you can do that practice a little bit of a mountain like this just a little bit of a painting uh, if you're painting an animal just paint part of the animal and then learn how your brush is working for you in your hands now i'm grabbing the brilliant violet i'm getting a little bit of white in it just to give it an opaqueness not too much I'm mixing it on another flat brush. I've got that one there in case I need to pick it up again to splice things together. Now chisel your brush up. And this is gonna come from about a third of the way down and evaporate here, because we're gonna have mist here as well, believe it or not. So we're gonna very thinly splice this from the red. I'll, I'll get the area where I want it about, let's say about, I don't know, there. And then from here, where there's nothing, we're going to start getting this colour all on its own as well. Like that, see? Follow the shape of what's on top. I want to look at my monitor. That colour. Now, I just looked. There, the red ones are like that, and this is more like that. So I've got to sort of change that a bit. Follow. This is just coming down here now because I'm going to have mist there. Just like that. Okay, from about, I'm not going to leave this tape there, I'm putting it there so you know what's going on in my mind, even though I'm not in Carolina once again. From about there, I want to mist, get some fog, just hovering 
between this line and halfway through that purple there, okay? I don't wanna to go too high up and make it all weird looking, but that's where I'm gonna do the fog. So I need to dry that now so I can do a bit of dry blending. Now I got myself a little scrumbling brush. It was a flat, but it's got all munted up over the time, but I find this good for doing my fog. So what I wanna do, because this is gonna be doing all the blending, I wanna pull some of this out like a flat sheet like that, okay? Here's the reason why I wear gloves. A lot of people say, why do you wear gloves? It's because look at the stuff that gets all over them. Now I wanna get this and stamp it on in there. Why I'm stamping it on is because look at the brush. It's loaded evenly. If I just mop that into there like that, I would have all blobs and globs everywhere and I'll be getting unwanted surprises on my canvas. And believe me, when you make a mistake, they're not happy mistakes because they get you grievously disappointed. All right, now that should make some fog. So my line is here. I wanna watch, I'll start over here. I'll get a lot of it off. Now watch here, I'll, I'll put it on, stamping it on, stamping it on, getting it to the height I want and then, see there's not much on my brush. You don't need much on your brush. Bringing it down, now just find the edge and then turn it into fog. You wanna see through this a little bit. You don't wanna make it all one big white blur. We wanna see our bits of stuff in between there. So I'm gonna just play with it just like this. There we go. And you'll see the difference from here to there. Hopefully you will. Hopefully you got a, you're watching it on a big screen there. Going along here. And it doesn't matter if some bits of your fog are brighter or thicker than others because I do know, I've seen fog in the eastern states of Australia. They have different values of fog. Watch this here, what I did there, I just went all the way along the base there like that, like that. The more you do it, the more quicker you get at it. And then I'm starting to just lightly get it up here. Now I can stop and analyze this, but that's the gist of it. Now I've given that a dry and I wanna get this lake, it's gonna be about there, the height of it. I'm gonna put a lake there, so I'll get this about there. And I'm just gonna use the dioxine purple to paint my lake in with a flat brush. So, and some of the white. So where's my dioxine? Here it is here. So what I wanna do is mix this to the value I want. And that tape has just made it so much easier. So I'll come across here. Okay, pick up some more. Um, why I did that, I've seen how my brush is working. It doesn't have to be fully mixed either. It can be a bit marbly. Horizontal strokes. Like that. So we've got light and dark in there. All the way over here, get a bit more white into that. I want this. Pick up just the dioxine purple. Get some bands of dark in it if you want like that. I'm just showing you now as an example. And if you feel there's too many dark bits, you can grab the lighter color and add some light there. But with this now, I do want to fleckle in some shimmer on this, okay? So I'll just let me finish getting these, I call them swell shadows. They're showing you the swell within the water. Now I've got my toothbrush. I want to just dampen it a bit, get some of this titanium white on a flat ribbon. And I want to get that in the bristles of the toothbrush, just so as I can control all my shimmer on this lake, okay? This is another procedure in itself you can practice. See, just the tips of the brush is loaded up. Now I'll put extra tape up there so I don't get these up the top there, and I want this all fleckling along here. I want the, the, the main of it right against the 
horizon line there. Now look how much I get out of this one load up. You can control, you're not getting big spaghetti blobs in there, you're getting nice dots, shimmery dots. Okay, now I can reload it and come down. I want it lighter down here, so I'm doing less flicking and further away. The dots are more spaced apart, where up there I can control how close I want them. That's why I said everything's a procedure you can practice. Just practice how to load up a toothbrush and how to get fine dots and condensed dots. Okay, now we'll take that tape off and just have a little gander to see how she looks. Easy does it. I didn't press it on very tight. Now I've dried it, I'm just grabbing the pure white on a flat brush, just so as I can get some speckles. Where are we? Come from that line, and I wanna get some of them on the line, just there, and some of them coming up. Reload your brush, you want these nice and vibrant. What I did do, I just did it off camera, but I pretty much put a bit of a line, a shimmery reflection line from the, the moon objects up above. Now I have dried that, grabbing another flat brush and some more of our dioxine purple. We want to map in our, our foreground. So I want to come down maybe, I'll come from about here, a bit of a flat top there, come down into the water, way down in there. I want to see some of that water. I might see some of that. There like that. I'm just putting this here so you can see it. Uh, that can probably come a bit higher, about there. Down there. There we go, and that can just evaporate there like that. Now I just simply want to block that in, but keeping it dark, because we need the darks there to make the lights, when we put the lights on it work. So I'm gonna kind of just do this. Because what I want to do here, I want to get down here, down there, down there. I've got to get it wet with the wet paint for the lighter stuff to work. I'll show you. So we've got that on. Now we want to get the bottom half of this dioxine purple a little bit lighter. So we've got all the wet paint there, so it's going to work. I'll need a bit over here. And we're simply just going to add some of the white to the brush. Get some of this stuff here. And it's going to mix with that. Come from the bottom. Watch. I'll get it on and I'll let the brush make it go to its faded amount. Because that paint's still wet, it's going to allow that to happen. Okay, just like so. And I want it about that height all the way along. Bit more white in there. It'll make sense when I put the, the final piece on as well. And then when you've watched the whole video and you know what's happening, you know what you're gonna paint and there's nothing better than knowing what you're gonna paint. Grabbing this colour again down here and do what we did like we did on the top mountain. We want to shape this. So this one here, where are we? Let's get right against there. Okay. Now I want to get this out the other way there, coming across. Constantly loading my brush up. I'm making a flat top on here. I'm gonna load my brush up a bit better than that. Come down here. And 
and we've got to do the same again. I'll get a bit of this coming to about there. And we'll get a bit of, um, I don't know, some of it scooting out from there. Coming across here and fading into that bit there. You can see what I do, I leaving the left side shadowed like there there and there and on this one i'll do the same as well i'll do that imaginary oh come along here if i can there we go and we're just going to do our <laughs> zigzag all the way to there Okay, I'm picking up the purple again, the one we put up here, and we're just going to slightly do the same thing here, but very minimal. Because where that this bit here is, I want you to go like this. Come to it, take your time, do a little bit at a time. <laughs> How's that looking? That's okay, I can just see the shadowing because it's kind of creating a base shadow for this colour, I suppose. Now get yourself a dark colour. I've got a bit of dioxine left there. I'm not going to waste it. I can't put it back in the tube. So I'm going to, because I was going to use black, but I'll put some black and I'll mix that dioxine purple with it. I'm just going to use a filbert now. So that'll be, this is going to be my foreground dark colour. Everything's had a dry. Now I want to, create work out I want a, I want a bit of an opening there so I'll come down here could use a flat brush but what I want to do is pretty much create the foreground coming down just coming up and down in a naturey way let's come down a bit and then up again just so it's not too uniform broke that bit there can you see that Yes, you can. You can see how it's set it back. I do want a tree right about here, so I'll get him in there. Nice and open, silhouetted tree. I'm putting it in a bit where we will see the actual bits and bobs of it. Get some of that a bit darker. There we go. Got to not forget to put my patrons in here. Give this some trunkage. Oh, I need a lot more water in that. So we're gonna come up here and just make some trunks into this tree here, silhouette of a tree. bringing a branch right out there you know we can probably have some other little bits and bobs here as well silhouetted shrubs have some kind of silhouette shrub just coming from the bottom there we'll put a flock of patrons in our painting eh so, I don't know, they're probably coming from there and they're just little flickety dotty things but within perspective of the painting. I don't know how many patrons I've got, I'll have to have a look and count them. But yeah, there's a few there. And if you're not a patron and you want to support my content, please hit the patron tab below in the description box and nominate how much you want to pledge every month. These are just wiggly little dots making of birds, I suppose. 
Yeah, it looks like a heap of patrons flying out there. You could probably get, <laughs> I don't know, a few that were real keen, they left early and they're coming across the moon or the planet there. Mm. Just more facets of bullshit. All right, we'll sign this and then I'll whack a frame on it. I'll see if I can get a tinier signature. And just remember, all my tutorial paintings are for sale. Message me on Facebook, links in the description box below. I've got so many paintings building up and they need to find a home. Okay, and we'll put Steve's little footprint on there. There we go, that's not too shabby, is it? It's some kind of space outback scene, isn't it? We've got some subjects of planets there. We've got our Patreon birds flying through the scene. We've got distance and mist and a bit of foreground. You can probably even put a silhouette of a person there. But I know you can do it. Well, that was fun and interesting. I quite enjoyed that. And if you like what I'm doing, you tell your friends. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody. Also, have a look at this other video of mine. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.